All right, guys. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. And uh, what we're going to talk about today. So now we're going to talk about we're, and we're going to speak in the asset class of real estate. And I have a special guest with me, Mark M.J. Jackson, who's the CEO of Investor Comps. I had the pleasure of recently being interviewed on his show. So we said, well, turn about fair play. I'd like to introduce you to my audience. And um, we're going to you know, tell them, tell them what I didn't tell them, tell them about yourself and then tell them about investor comps. And let's, let's, let's talk about real estate today. Absolutely. Kurt, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity to care and share with your audience. This is a joy. So first and foremost, thank you for the invitation and, and just the opportunity to be here. Um, look, the thing that I love is that synergy you're being uh, in the Philadelphia market, which is where I was born, uh, raised on the Jersey shore. And I actually went to school in the Southeast at HBCU. We share that in common right. as well, having uh, attended HBCUs. Uh, um, I went through you know, some of the basic things, go to school, get a good job, was a horrible employee, hated it. <laughs> right. um, and got yeah, that the, in common too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Got the entrepreneurial bug and um, having been in hospitality, transportation management, uh, I was buying my first home. I was at the closing table and there was this you know, 20 page legal document that had images of the home I was acquiring and some of the other homes along the street. And it had these different numbers on it. And at the time I was finishing up my accounting degree and I was looking at the numbers on the page and running some of the ratios in my head, you know, just kind of loving numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw that the pictures of the home that I was acquiring was on the paper. It wasn't taped to the paper, it was on the paper. And that told me it was done with the new thing that was out at that time, digital cameras. And I love gadgets, so I, and I didn't need a reason to buy a digital camera, I needed an excuse. And I was looking <laughs> I was looking at it. And and then of course, again, 20 pages of the document, and there was, so there was some database management software moving information all around the report. So, those three things really spoke to me. So at the time I, I turned to my wife, I said, I have no idea what this is, but I could do it. And so our realtor explained that I was looking at the appraisal and that is what the bank uses to justify the value for them lending um, the mortgage on the property. And uh, I jokingly say I took immediate action and waited three years <laughs> before I decided to uh, take a buyout from our corporation, the company I was with, uh, go to appraisal school and everything in the last 23 years has been just the result of that divine intervention moment. Seeing that here were some skill sets that I didn't even realize that were part of my DNA, but yet I could go deploy, be successful in most cases and more anything, being a servant to others. Um, those that were doing refinances on their home, buying new homes, to real estate investors that were looking to deploy capital to earn good returns and essentially advising them what deals they should do and which ones they shouldn't do. Because your average appraiser just goes and gets three comps, gets three listings, here's the report, I'm done, pay me. Um, and that just wasn't the vein I operated in. I looked at things that were reg regarding whether the home had functional obsolescence uh, with the floor plan. If in fact it was in an area that was more of a food desert and what would be the impact of doing a renovation and maybe a fix and flip in that area. These other skill sets that came along with really discovering how to take a valuation first approach to real estate, the biggest success that we've had over the years and continue to do is recognizing that regardless of what type of transaction you're doing in real estate, whether you're a passive investor and just being the bank and deploying capital, or if you're an active investor engaging and looking to see if you're going to put your time, energy, and resources into doing that deal is doesn't make a difference if it's a foreclosure, a short sale, a motivated seller, subject to deal, uh, any of these things that are the source of the transaction, you have to take a step back and stop and say, what is the best acquisition value? What should I actually pay for? What should I be lending on this asset as a, as a private lender? And then what simultaneously is the after repair value? Where am I going to know that I'm acquiring right, that I've got a margin in place 
in case something shifts and adjusts that I'm making a profit as I deploy my time, energy, capital, money. And that's been the impetus and the creation of investor comps after my years as an appraiser. And we got cranking in 2006 and continue to go forward today, most importantly, in the space of virtual investing. The mortgage and great, the great recession of 2007, 2008 created so many opportunities with resources of banks putting their discounted properties online, REOs online, auction properties online, and then taking the appraisal skills and being able to have a data source like investor comps, look at markets in Virginia, look at markets in Missouri, look at markets in California, Texas, and all these other places that you can sit at home, whether you're an active investor just wholesaling, or if you're a private lender and looking to pour cap deploy capital, you can very seamlessly within our VIP plus community talk the same language around deals such that the ones that are active investors and in finding deals can talk to the members inside the VIP plus community and investor comps and work with the, the passive, the practice professionals that have capital deploy. And we've done deals like that on an ongoing basis for a number of years. And it's been a joy, a privilege, and an honor to lead and guide that all from the point of view of being a real estate appraiser, watching folks being able to fund legacy planning for college education and, and really even just plan B retirement, having capital they can use for infinite banking, the strategies that you teach, all as a result of having real estate as a tool and vehicle to do that. I look, okay, I got so many questions. All right, because uh, <laughs> I wasn't even completely aware of, of, of the strategy. So let's talk about, oh my God. So, all right, so you, it's, it's, it's really interesting because you took your background as an appraisal looking at it one way, but you kind of put that on steroids because I've never heard a, a, a appraisal talk like that. So let me just do, I'm going to do a basic thing, right? Sure, so sure. for people that are local, are there things that's on, just put your appraiser hat on that they should be looking to do to, cause I, I work with, or people that listen are people that are flipping or they're trying to refurbish to rent back out, but they want the highest valuation so they can do the cash out. Yeah, so yeah. are there things that they're missing that they could be doing to help with their value? Yeah, it's really unique because as an appraiser and having the benefit of working with clients, so we have a number of coaching clients that I've worked with. I've, I've done deals with people that are in Alaska, Hawaii, uh, we do transactions in Puerto Rico. And so let me kind of break it down in this way. I love yeah. using Florida as an example. It's one of those that really there's a, a real synergy that happens when it comes to being in the South, in, in the state of Florida, where you would normally think that having a pool is absolutely essential. So I'll start down in Cape Coral. We recently had an investor comps member, active investor. They identified a HUD foreclosure property in Cape Coral. Now, this particular asset had a pool and a lanai um, on over top of the pool, okay, in a residential community. Um, the rents at the time in 2019 weren't really that sexy for a home that we were going to cost about $170,000 to acquire rent and, and lease and renovate. Um, the rents were probably about $18, $1,900, but we had the capacity of doing an Airbnb. And so Therefore, the income was actually almost double what it would have been as a regular rental property. And because it had that pool with the lanai on it was really the key thing. But now if you take that same property in Cape Coral, and let's just say you move it up to Tampa, not more than 90 minutes, almost two hours away. Um, having the pool is essential, but not Having, having the lanai, in some cases, is seen as overkill or not necessary. So mm -hmm. as you're a real estate investor doing a deal, you want to make sure that you're deploying not what you want to put into an asset, but what's going to be keen and identified to the market area that will make it a profitable sale. You go throw a lanai on there, that's great, but are you going to get the value back for doing it? You could do something like, um, if, if I take it and move up to just doing a brownstone right there in in South Philly or in Jersey, over in Camden or Cherry Hill, whatever the case may be. Well, not so much Cherry Hill, maybe uh, Camden 
um, in that area. Right. You could you could have a brownstone and then you go in and start doing the renovations to it. And you look at how you're going to open up the walls, where the bathrooms are going to be, and things of that nature. But one of the key elements that really makes those homes go well is when you go not the first floor, second floor, but to the, well, maybe the second or third floor, is having natural light coming in through skylights. You have someone says, well, I want to get rid of skylights because I'm not worried about it. I don't want to deal with the moisture and so on and so forth, that type of thing. But it is one of those things that is tried and true part of that market area to have a skylight, maybe in the, in the, in the bathroom that's upstairs or maybe in the hallway, things of that nature. So you have to be mindful of what are the attributes that go to the individual assets based on the location that you're in, not just based on what you think, but what the market will dictate. So those are the things that I've had the good fortune, even in um, areas like um, Breckenridge, Colorado, and so what's absolutely essential there is being able to have a home that has an A-frame roof. You've got to be able to manage the weight of the snow, how it comes down and how it gets away from um, the, the structure of the home that supports that weight. The only thing it's supposed to really do is support the roof. And then you support the roof in another 300, 400 pounds of snow. So okay. yeah. the, the construction, how it's done, it goes from market area to market area. Um, there's things that we do and I've done flips in help clients in Denver, Colorado, where we look at what's the landscaping mature we're going to put around the property. This is a dry area that doesn't get a lot of rain. It does get snow. But if you're going to go and introduce flowers and shrubs and stuff like that, like you would in the southeast, you're going to be in trouble because either you're going to, have to put a whole bunch of irrigation in, which you're going to, have to pay the money for to be able to keep those plants going, or right. you can put in more drought tolerant or zero scape, add more stone and material that doesn't need necessarily to be nurtured and you still have good curb appeal. So these are the things that um, because of the number of folks I've had the good fortune to engage with through the investor comps community that we, we share these dialogues for good success. We're talking about what do I need to do to maximize the value? And then what are the things that otherwise wouldn't add value, but I'm gonna spend money on that I may not get a return back. So though that, that's how we go for it. I, I realize that's a, a probably a broad answer starting in Florida. And no, Florida. no, that's that's perfect. Cause I think that, you know, one of the things that I got is from the Rich Dads Guy show. It's like like live where you want to live, but invest where the dollars make sense, right? Yes. And yeah. so as you as we think about so because the other king thing you said was the virtual investing, right? And mm -hmm. so a lot of people because they can't put their hand on it, even though it's a you know a brick and mortar asset, they're shying away from. I think COVID's helped a little bit, even like with walkthroughs with video cameras. But yeah, speak to the virtual investing, and the, I I think with the community of being able to ask this question, because how would you know? There's no boots on the ground. You've got to trust the turnkey provider or the realtor, and yeah. you know how does that interplay work with if they're I'm kind of getting at why they should work with you, why you might need to be in the mix and part of their team. And, uh, um, you know, if they want to invest out of state, maybe yeah. even, you know, that's a three questions, but speak to that and how, how people grow their portfolio that way. Yeah. I, I, I really think first and foremost, it, it, it all has to do with relationship. Um, I like to believe that, um, one, the skill set provides a certain way to be able to communicate intentionally regarding the assets that you're encouraging people to deploy capital in. Um, mm -hmm. It's demonstrating that it's not a fire. You don't want, you know, you don't necessarily, you can invest in a number of different markets, but you want to invest in a market that you have an affinity for. Even as we tell and teach within the community, you may live in Phoenix, but maybe you grew up or maybe grandma's house was in. Um, St. Louis or something like that. So you pass through the area. So you have an affinity for it. Um, that might be one of the areas that you look to engage in, or you want to engage with someone that has a full operation that's taking place like we do. And we're heavily engaged in the Southern Atlanta, um, South Atlanta Crescent. And that's anything below Interstate 20 and in particular in Bibb and Houston County. We have a full portfolio going on there. Um, and it's, it's another thing where, you know, again, if you're in Phoenix and you think that, you know, you're, you're accustomed to the average home being, in some cases, half a million dollars. 
And the idea that you can deploy $65,000 or maybe $100,000 for a property to act, acquire and renovate that's going to produce, you know, $1,300, $1,400 a month of income, it may not sound right. It's like, how is that even possible? But it has to do with having access to markets that are going to allow you to be successful. And then really getting in and looking under hood. You know, we talk about this idea of, you know, trust but verify. And the nice part about investor comps, here's the thing that other uh, individuals that are maybe teaching, engaging, and, and looking at assets. Every single project that I say I've done or worked on, you can go right in my own system and see if I say it, we bought it for this much, who was on the title with, how much we sold it for. So there's a great, tremendous amount of transparency and, and information that takes place out there in the way that I operate through investor comps, as well as our real estate development that gives a person, again, uh, we like to say that feeling of confidence and complete sense of control that they know they're going to make a profit as they deploy their capital. I hope that helps. It does. And so you're going to help. So if they're somebody that's looking for cash flowing assets and they want to get out, let's say they, I just, we're near Philly, right? So let's say they're in Philly, but Philly's, are not the most friendly towards landlords. We've got people that don't, you know, they want to do rent control and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I want to get a little bit more, I want to get out of here. I want to diversify geographically. Yes. They would call you to help them do that. Right. Or to, to participate in something that y'all are doing. I'm just trying to get yeah. clear so they know what you're talking about. Yeah. So we really get into four basic concepts. One is we want to know that we're engaging in market areas that have population growth. That, that's the first thing. The second component is that you want to know that you have rent growth. The next thing is that you're in a situation where um, you sorry, there's a jet going overhead. <laughs> um, you want to know that it is a landlord friendly state. That is, I yep. mean, not municipality, but state, because that's going to help your efforts. And then you want to know that you've got uh, what is it? Um, job growth as well. So it's going to be population growth, job growth, rental growth, and um, landlord friendly state. That's where you, it doesn't mean that you can't invest in other places. I've done deals in Jersey. I've done deals in Maryland, um, places that aren't necessarily as landlord friendly, but that's what I'm doing fix and flip as compared to long-term hold and wealth building assets. So you get to pick and choose based on the strategy you want to deploy for good success. But those four cornerstones for anyone in your audience that's listening, um, that's going to be the thing that they really want to engage in. Now, it doesn't, have, it doesn't hold true if you're going to be boots on the ground in your own market area, but when it comes to virtual investing, those four things are absolutely paramount for your good success while you're living somewhere else and deploying capital in a different market area. So if they go to your site, they'll see examples or stuff that they could participate in as an investor? That would be my company, America's Discount Home Deals, um, which okay. essentially <laughs> is the proof that taking a valuation first approach works. We do all of our uh, deals and deployment of capital, helping practice professionals make good returns on transactions at America's Discount Home Deals. That's where all of our real estate activity is. The investor comps is where we come together, a community, to know that hey, we're betting right deals. We're looking at them. We have a we have a meeting every single week on Thursday where the whole community comes together and we start talking about the different transactions are, that are taking place. And that's where all those wonderful synergies start happening. Ah, okay, all right. So now there are two different things. See, so guys, I I'm learning this as we do the interview of of uh, <laughs> with with the with the offer is okay. So. If uh, if I'm an investor or want to be an investor or a private lender, I've got money to lend and I'm I want to get in a community and you know either vet is this a good place to deploy my capital or which I'm I'm thinking about acquiring some stuff in this area. What experiences have you guys had with this? What's going on? How does the, that kind of stuff? This is what your what what your, what your community does. Okay, yeah, that's that that we, we do both absolutely. And, and again, the two marry so very, very well. Even when I started doing my own investing, I started out, again, just as an appraiser. Um, 
you, know, you go out, you knock on the door and say, Miss Loan Officer, Mr. Loan Officer, um, can I do an appraisal for you? And you, you get your book of business going that way. And essentially what happened over time is I started getting introduced, introduced to loan officers that had investors doing deals. And so now the nice part about being an appraiser versus a loan officer is that we always get paid. We go, you do the job, you get compensated, you're done. You're not stuck in an office. You're actually, you know, making your own time schedules, things of that nature. But here's the rub. I remember going to a couple of investor closings. Now, as an investor and doing, pardon me, as a, an investing appraiser, you actually do income schedules, uh, you do rental analysis, things of that nature. And so that increases the cost of your appraisal. It goes from being like $350, $375, $400 to in excess of $700 or $800. And that mm -hmm. feels really good to be able to make more for the, you know, doing one asset, um, but you're getting paid more. But you go to the closing table and you see the investor walk away with $20,000, 30000 35000 That's when you realize, okay, they can't do that. Not that they can't do it, but I'm a part of their good success. But they're making a whole lot more than I am. Right, right. <laughs> and that's when the, you know, that's when, okay, how do I get on the investing side as well? Because now I don't have to have anyone tell me what the value of the property is. I'm already doing that. I can analyze and determine for myself, should I do those transactions? And here's the other thing that's really, really dynamic in the community is that we'll have the active investors, they'll bring deals and we're looking at, hey, that's one, absolutely, all the criteria matches up. And then they'll, want, they'll be one say, hey, I want to bid on this one. I'm ready to move forward in the transaction. We start breaking down. It's like, no, you need to throw that puppy back. Or you need to go back and get it at a different number. And these are the dynamics as to why that deal is not going to be the one that works well for you. And, okay. and I'm going to tell you, inside the community, there are any number of people that are coming to us early on that even as past investors say, oh, he's got a deal. I want to be able to put capital in that one. I got some money. I've got my you know, Roth IRA. I mean, I've got $200,000 right. in it. I've got to get it working. And we're like, that's not the one. So there's a great sense of protection that takes place inside the community as we're actively doing deals together, but also the ones that we deploy that have already been vetted and are ready to go at America's discount home deals as well. So Okay. So who it, should be do me a favor, back up or adjust your camera because we're gonna like half your face for okay. people that are listening but, to the um, video. It's got a there, right I'm there. Moving my hands too much. It's got a right. thing where I can actually make a zoom in and zoom out. <laughs> And so who should be, as they hear this, who, who do you help? Who should be, man, I, I need to give MJ a call. Like I need to talk, talk to him. What are the, what are the people that should be reaching out to you that you could serve? Yeah. You believe? Absolutely. It really falls into two groups. It falls into the wealth of practice professionals out there. We have a, a tremendous relationship um, with dentists as one audience um, that have practices in on the East Coast, West Coast, Texas, California, Idaho, Salt Lake. We really help them deploy either the Family Limited Partnership, um, LLC Capital, or uh, custodial funds. Those are held with, um, again, self-directed capital. We help them deploy as part of their own capital stack. Any number of different docs that we work with, um, in some cases, attorneys, CPAs, chiropractors, veterinarians, um, we just help them manage their capital stack. They've got money in the markets. They've got money maybe that they're putting in funds and syndications, but then there's the one-off deals that we do because we don't operate a fund or any type of syndications, where they know they've got funds secured by one asset, either that they're lending on or that they're coming in and doing as a turnkey property that is an asset they own. Maybe they've applied leverage, maybe they haven't, but they're making good returns on those assets that are wealth building assets that they'll have a long time on the books for their own legacy plan. Uh, simultaneously, we're working with our training programs within investor comps for the person that maybe um, they've owned a home, they bought another home, and now they see the fruit of what it is from the, the home they kept when they're leasing out, or 
maybe they've tried their hand at doing a wholesale deal or two, and they want to actually enhance the margins that they return that they can earn on those deals or expand their territory. So we work with and help and guide the efforts of those that are really looking to do that plan B to have that passive income through virtual real estate investing. And we also very in a very practical way, help those that are getting started or want to expand their own tangible real estate investing activity. And we have, I enjoy working with both. And what's really mm -hmm. nice is the synergy that happens between the two. When you've got some folks that are really getting their feet underneath them, they're identifying good deals, and yet there's capital that wants to be deployed. And we're all in community working together for our collaborative good success. So um, those are the two boxes of folks that I'm able to help and serve okay. very, very well. What does that look like? Like, so I, I have a picture, so I can, I, so I, and I would add to the dentist, doctors, successful business owners that mm -hmm. their main, their best investment is their business, right? But mm -hmm. you need to buy things that cash flow outside the business because the yep. business owners think that they have this, I won't say it's an illusion, but this, this, they think they're going to sell the business, right? And most of the time, it doesn't sell. So they're they're building for this big exit, uh, exit. exit mm -hmm. you know. But a lot of times that doesn't happen. And so, Mark, my, my message is to you should be building and buying assets outside the business along the way, right? Sure. And building financial freedom. And so, let's say they they want to start to do that. What is the 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 onboarding and that process looks like whether they're well it's very well, what does it look like you know you're in your in your model so they, yeah you know. so just let's just, again sticking with the vip plus community the virtual investing pro um yeah. we have lots of members in there that identify and want to be able to deploy capital and we have folks that are out finding deals so i'll give you a perfect example i've got a, a client inside the vip plus community that lives in atlanta and but goes down to Macon to Macon and Warner Robins about 90 minutes away to bet deals. And so that individual, we identify deals and we go through as a community and look at them. We say, hey, this one's under contract. This would make a good long term hold asset. Um, we we're able to acquire it about 1.25 renovation and acquisition over what the market area rents would be. And then someone else that is a practice professional says, I want that deal. I want to deploy my capital on that one. And so that's where the real synergy of the two come together. Um, what, what will happen over time, though, is that the one that is the active investor is identifying the deals, the capital they're earning and deploying. We work with them, say, look, pool your resources because you want to buy two, sell one. You want to be able to identify an asset that you can not only just move and wholesale to someone else, but you want to identify one that as you build up your own capital, you can keep and start doing your own wealth building portfolio. So that's the basic dynamic of what it looks like. But it's even more than that. We have um, we have folks that are that live in Sarasota, Florida, that are actually originally from Baltimore. Well, they know the Baltimore area very, very well, even though now they're living in Sarasota. So mm -hmm. they'll identify assets that we can see that will be long term hold. Um, income producing assets. And we bring in um, practice professional. I mean, I've got assets where someone that lives in, um, I want to say they live just outside Flagstaff that invested in assets in Maryland from another team member that found it. And they've earned good passive income over the time that we held that asset after doing renovation. And then we sold it. And what happens is because we need a lower interest rate to hold that property over a 60 month note, when it does sell at about 36 months, there's an equity kicker because the value of the property predictably within means um, was average to go up. So not only do they get back their principal, but they also get an equity kicker that gets their returns in the double digits. So there's a very intentional way that we go about the assets that we're bringing on, how we can see the strategy we want to use, fix and flip, wholesale, long-term hold, wealth building asset, um, as we're doing it for both the passive investors that are engaging to pulling capital and for those that are finding deals even outside of their own market area, but having good success earning returns as they wholesale.
those transactions. So okay. um, that's, that's some yeah, of the- Thanks for that clarity, because yeah, I'm thinking like two that? people of my clients that like some of the times I'm, I'm, when we're talking, I'm thinking about, all right, what is the understanding of this? I think I got somebody that needs to hear this, <laughs> you know, because I as I tell people, I don't, I'm not, I do work with clients, right? And I don't try to get involved in telling them what to do, but I, I like, I do the show so that I can give resources that if you find this intriguing, now you, you know, you've got a resource to, to kind of help you do what you want to do and be in a community and learn that kind of stuff. And so that's, that's what I'm hearing as I do. So that's some of this, I've got a, you know, a person in mind came into some money, looking to develop passive income, looking for, doesn't know if they want to buy more or put the money away and just receive income. So that, 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 uh, I just let them know, look, there's two ways. There's a couple ways to make money. You might want to meet somebody, you know, and I, I'm out. I'm, I'm your defensive coordinator. All oh, that's offense, right? I'm going to make sure you save. I make sure you understand the difference between an asset and a liability that you're protected and you're liquid and you know, to focus on building cash flow. And then you, I think that you want to, you know, vet out opportunities and have strategic partners that will help you, you know, uh, build assets so you become financially free and that's 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 the name of the game so that's that's i hear that and you know outside of your backyard like the dentist they already they have money they make a lot of money but they don't have time to be running around looking at stuff so but they so if they can get you know i don't know what you what they would charge but eight nine ten percent and, and a check every month or whatever and and an roi that's gold i mean without stock market risk with a non-correlated asset secured by real estate that's yeah. awesome you know yeah. And that's what you want. So you don't have a money making problem. They need to not lose money and, and make their money make money. And that's uh right. that's you gotta figure out where you are, like, you know, in terms of that that of your financial situation. And then what you need dictates what you do. Right, right. And I look at it this way. Um, for the those that are listening and engaging, I mean, we really, especially with the 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 practice professionals, the business owners, um, we we really are the who to their how. Um, I love doing and exploring the, the realms of different market areas as we do transactions. Uh, it's, it's been a joy and it continues to be some. It's, it's the whole thing, your work or my work is my play. It, it, mm -hmm. it, it really genuinely is. But just like um, any other business owner, there's things that um, I've been able to enjoy in terms of travel, pursuing, Triathlon is something I absolutely love to do. And it takes a number of hours to be able to do the training that goes along with it. But it's what I enjoy doing. And it's the real estate and the fruit that has come from it that has yeah. allowed that opportunity. Even being exposed to and discovering how infinite banking works and being able to put capital into that, which is the passive that comes from the real estate that we hold. And, 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 act, right. and active income as well. I won't make it seem right. as, as all passive, but this is a space that um, it, it's it's the space you want to be in that you didn't even realize, but right. fortunately, right. it's come to fruition over time, and it's more than I could have ever dreamed of. And I'm just grateful to be in a space to to care, share, drop knowledge, even as I get. I mean, when it comes to you know talking about self directed IRAs or the infinite banking or even how to arbitrage the capital that you're making on your passive income to build it up, to go do another transaction. There are things that I just love caring, sharing, teaching, and exposing, not just within my own family, but of course, with throughout the client base as well. Right. That's fantastic. So Mark, how should they, um, where, how can they follow what you're doing? Reach out to you if, if uh, you, you've hit a nerve of, of something they need to discuss more about. What's the best way to, 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 to touch base with you? The easiest, simplest way, just go to themarkjackson.com. There's a link there to kind of demonstrate what we do and they also schedule a call, have an opportunity to connect. So themarkjackson.com. All right, there you go, guys. So we're going to put that in the show notes. And uh, so we, I would go there, I would check it out and uh, see what he does. And then as you look at your investing, um, you know, see if it, they can help you you know, build more cash flow, expand what you're doing, all that good stuff, right? Because there's no such thing as having too much capital, too much cash flow, too much. This is not a thing, right? Mm -hmm. 
and we want to get better. And, you know, you want to educate yourself because see, as you, what, what we tell you, MJ, is that as your knowledge goes up, your risk comes down. Mm -hmm. I like that. That is so very true. It's, it's, and it's practical as well. <laughs> what you do and the way that you um, work through your own model, the five principles followed by the three investing rules, those things are try and true. And as long as, and, and, and your success speaks to it, the, the audience that you've built, the clients you've engaged with over years, and even the folks that you will get referrals from will continue to benefit from the things that you teach, care and share from that wealth building and legacy planning aspect. So thank you for all that you do. Yeah, my pleasure. I took from your lips to God's ears, right? So just keep, keep calling me. All right. So, <laughs> but, so uh mj thank you so much for uh being a guest on the on the practical wealth show and and dropping gems and so That's we're gonna good. put the mark jackson.com in the show notes and y'all make sure y'all reach out to him and uh if you like this episode and you feel it could benefit from somebody share it with them don't don't keep us a secret and um leave us a review right and uh uh, Mark, any, any, any closing thoughts, anything I didn't ask you, I should ask you that we want to make sure you say, <laughs> well, I, I, I always think of this one co quote and that's make sure your actions match your desired results. Um, very, very simple, very, very straightforward. If you've, if you've got a thought or something that you, that you think that you want to live into, um, be in a posture where you're acting on it, make sure your actions match your desired results. It's been a very fruitful, um, quote or a directive that was shared with me when I was in my early twenties, I probably didn't start using it until I was in my thirties, but right. once I did, <laughs> once I did, it's been uh, just a, a that's work. funny. That's you said, cause I had a similar quote, probably in my late twenties and somebody said your work ethic much match your dreams. <laughs> right. So yeah. similar, right. right. Similar thing. So, so two great words of winning. I'm gonna let that be the final. You're gonna let your word be the final word. And so goes, Go out there, guys, and you know, dream, and then do the work to to make your dreams. Don't don't watch um, uh, TV and fantasize over their dreams. You need to live your dream life, but you got to go to work. And there's some stuff to do. I hate to tell you, okay. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and um, but that's all right because you can do it. So, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Practical Well Show, and we will see you next week. Thanks, Mark. Take care.